you go live on Facebook and it took me forever to figure out um, how to do it. So sorry, we're late. Um, thank goodness for Molly and our IT support. <laughs> we made it. Um, so I'm just going to have a look and make sure that we're okay and that people can hear us before we get started. Um, let's see. Give me one sec. Oh no, my nose is running. Sorry guys, <laughs> I'm sick. Wait, your hair is amazing. I just wanted to it say is? that. Thanks. Oh yeah, this I'm really loving your hair. I would just, uh, was laying in bed. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> she woke up like that. Okay. So I mean, if I'm being honest, I woke up with this. There's not much I can do for these days. <laughs> I add a little water. Oh, oh my God. Look, look at that. I love alfalfa. that alfalfa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's just doing what it's doing. That's right. Um, so I just want to make sure it's working and then let's see. Give me one sec. Everyone's like, where are you? Okay, so it looks like people are liking it. Um, Someone said they can hear. Let's see. And I actually have two screens now on my desktop. So um, I can follow along if there's any questions from those watching while it's live. Oh, awesome. That's yeah. great. Um, Cheryl, can you let us know if it sounds okay on Facebook that not that we're having any like weird, um, like feedback type stuff. And while she's doing that, so I'm just going to introduce what we're doing. Um, I'm Ash Rodatz and I'm the co-founder of DFP along with Anna Guisado. And today I am hanging out with my co-teachers um Jenna and Kirsten and um we offer a year-long mentoring program together called No More Fucking Around and we thought it would be cool to kind of show um a couple of the things that we've done in that mentorship this past year um in 2020 to give people an idea of what kind of goes on I mean of course there's a lot when you're together for a year there's a lot more that goes on besides this but this is just like a little taste of that and so we had some amazing um, DFP members um, offer up that they will go ahead and let us do a portfolio review, a session review, a business review, and a website review. So thank you for being brave and letting people learn from you. And um, yeah, so we're going to start off with Olga and doing the portfolio review. Did you, Jenna or Kristen, was there something? I have it. Okay. Yep, so I something have it. that you wanted to add before we get started or are you good to go? Well, Olga, um, I just have a couple of questions before we look at your portfolio. Can you just give Jenna and I an idea um, regarding like where you're at in your, sh your, your shooting life, your experience? Um, are you working professionally now? Um, and it'd also be great to kind of get an idea of what you want your, your viewer, your potential client to understand, know, get a feeling for in terms of you as a photographer. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I started, uh, photographing in 2019, uh, in February after I saw your course at creative life. And I was like, hooked immediately and I just took out my camera and I started like learning manual mode and everything else so um last year by the end of last year I started my own business but I had to wrap it up pretty quickly like it's still there but it's on hold because I had a burnout in January so I cannot really I have like a full-time job so I was just doing this as a side kick and I uh, had to stop it because I just understood that pandemic, two kids, full-time job, photography business, building it is just a little too much for the moment. So um, basically I'm still photographing, but I'm only photographing for my, for, like for making pictures for my portfolio. Um, and um, 
Yeah. So like my one issue of mine is that most pictures are like from my family uh, and I need to get more clients in there. Um, and what I want them to see is um, like independence and empowerment is pretty important for me as values. Um, and this is something that I want to show for parents as well as for kids. Um, yeah. Um, Olga worked with me last year um, as okay. one of my students. And she, it was really amazing um, watching her to figure out what it is exactly she wanted families to um, connect with or the viewer to connect with, with her photos. And I think she does a really great job of, um, you, you honed in on that in terms of, okay, what is it that I want to say? You know, with that independence, it took a while to figure it out what you what you wanted to say exactly, but you did it. And I think the biggest thing is that you've remained consistent with that um, messaging in terms of okay, this is what I want to do for sure. Now let's see if my photos are doing that, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, I mean, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I'm a little bit irritated with you that you've only been shooting um, since 2019 <laughs> and you're making photos like this. It's actually not fair. I really feel like you should be making this, this level of photos, you know, 15 years from now, not two years it, during a pandemic. Like, um, and that is like the nicest compliment I can give you is that you, in, you have very good instinct, in my opinion, about um, not only what I feel like moment wise makes a good photo, photo, but what you want, what you're most interested in, um, bringing to the table in terms of visual conversation, um, what you want to say, how you want the viewer to feel about the people that you're photographing. Um, you have some really stunning photos in here. So, Thanks. uh, Jenna, any thoughts? Uh well, I was going to ask the same question. I was like, surely I heard that wrong, that she just started. I was going to ask again, when, when did you start shooting? <laughs> so great. <laughs> I told you you're brilliant, Olga. Yeah, yeah these are great. It's in incredibly humbling for um, folks like us that have been doing it for over 20 years. <laughs> we, we really should do a public flashback of my first year of shooting. <laughs> I'm like yeah, trembling. Correct. I cannot. Oh, she froze a little bit. What were you saying, Olga? You froze for a second. Oh, I froze. I said I'm trembling because I didn't expect oh. that. I was expecting like hard critique, and I was super <laughs> nervous. So. Cut I this. Cut that. <laughs> All right. Um, what I like is you have really. You have really fun moments that uh, are memorable, like that will make the viewer remember. Like, I really love this one. Listen, I'm not the biggest, I'm going to be honest. Some people have really embraced the idea of masks in photos. And since I've been shooting, I freaking hate them. Like <laughs> I, I've realized that maybe part of it is my crutch as a photographer, but I love facial expression and it's much harder for me to make great photos when I only have eyes. Um, so I'm a little bit more uh, pessimistic when it comes to mask photos, especially with kids. And I just freaking love this photo. Like, I just think it's fantastic. Um, uh, this one, I actually think might be stronger without the face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's stronger with just feet and mm -hmm. it's also quite curious. Like who the hell threw those badminton rackets? Like where did they even come from? Why were they thrown? Like all these, like, and I've talked about this before. Like I really love photos that raise a lot of questions for me but in a way where I don't need the answer, I just enjoy having the questions. So th this is one, an example of one of those pictures. Um, yeah, the key is not to, that the photo makes you confused as much as curious. Right. I'm just going with the ones that I uh, personally tagged. Um, and Jenny, you tell me if I'm missing any. Yeah, 
can you go back to the main group? I was just smiling at Olga's face and I missed that you were tagging. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a sweet face. Can't help but smile. Let me just see what you haven't flagged just in case. I think All right, I'm, probably... I'm going to un... I'm gonna hide the ones I tagged. Okay, and then can you just go through them quickly? Yeah. I think you've got what I like. Maybe that one. I was just gonna say, put that yeah. one in. Maybe that one. I, I sort of like that one too. Yeah. Also I also think this next one's funny. Oh, this one. I don't know why I didn't tag that one. Sorry. Oh, and, for sure. Um, I like that. Too. This one. I, I, got, I, guess I didn't get through all this of them. one too. Yeah. 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 I got them. Okay. So now let me hide the ones I didn't tag and we'll just look at the ones I did. So basically, Olga, almost all of them are in there, which yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And the ones that weren't flagged, the only thing about them, like they can almost be talked about universally, is that they they have um, a lot of them have some distance, not just physically, but there's some emotional distance from them. Whereas the other ones, you're really engaged and you have a clear point of view. These ones 100%. just don't show that as strongly, and so why put them against the other ones that are stronger? Or for me, there was some technical issues with the ones that I didn't select. Mm -hmm. And remember, when it comes to our portfolio, we want every single image to um, be as good as the one before or after. And so any photos where I feel like even technically it's going to pull it back a little, like as a collective uh, body of work, I'm inclined to just take it out. Mm -hmm. um, some of those would be this one technically, uh, aside from like maybe just not feeling very in invested in the moment. Um, technically the toning is a little weird. And I think that's because your light was harsh and hard to work with. And this is a really good example um, and something that Jenna and I impress upon everyone we work with is when it comes to light, 99% of the time, you're just not going to be able to fight against it. You have to work with the light that you've got. And if you try and fight against the light, um, in the end, you probably aren't going to have a photo that you love simply because technically it's going to feel a little bit off. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. They're almost in the wrong direction. Like if, if you're going to go with this kind of light, it's got to be the, the right. importance yeah. has to be the other way. Right. Yeah. Although I wonder if it would even work better in color in general, because you have, I uh, didn't, it just didn't work it at didn't all. Work. Yeah. <laughs> it I just didn't work. Yeah. I was wondering because the figure to ground is really good, you know, with that dark background and things like that, but I can, uh, I can understand that. And yeah, it's not uh, like why I chose it is because the story about the parenthood here is so apparent to me because they're like two kids running away and dad is just completely exhausted, like dragging uh, the stroller behind him. Um, and I did it in black and white because obviously color didn't work. So, yeah, but I'm completely with you to just take it out of the portfolio. I'm a big fan of, and many of my students know this, about having a little funeral for photos that we want to work, but they just aren't working. And so we have yeah. a moment of silent for them, silence for them, and then we just let them go. <laughs> like it just, <laughs> it's just not working. And it doesn't matter because you have so many other really great photos that are, so it doesn't matter. Um, for me, I here's an example of, I've seen this photo a million times. In fact, I've made this photo, right? We all probably have. And I will preface this by saying we're discussing portfolio versus delivery to a client, right? If it was delivery to a client, 100% you, you give it to them. But if we're talking about standing out and like representing your point of view and your vision, for me, this type of photo, I actually need it to be A, really, in this case, I kind of want it to be pretty sharp. And what's, what's sharp in this photo is the cracks in her mouth, but if probably because her lips are dry, but I don't think that's intentionally what was most interesting to you is actually the teeth and the teeth are um, soft, like in focus. Mm -hmm. So I need the teeth like much more in focus. And I kind of need something a little bit more extraordinary in this, in the ordinary than just those two missing teeth. I almost wonder if it's even shot a little bit from above. 
And so we really see the holes because here's the thing that I find interesting. There are some pretty significant holes in where the teeth are missing, but we're not exaggerating that. And I think that's that little extraordinary in the ordinary. Do you see that? And Jenna, mm -hmm. do you agree? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I was just thinking of how to sum it up almost. So what you're saying is, and how I feel too, is what you need is something either that's universally extraordinary or that's extremely specific to this kid's version of losing a tooth or that's graphically extraordinary. Yeah. Yep. It's just not quite there. And again, I'm kind of like, oh, you're such a good photographer. Like who cares about this yep. photo? Let's just like, let this photo yep. go in terms of your portfolio. Cause we don't, it, it's not, it's not going to make or break your someone hiring you at all. Um, you know, for this, it's a little bit composition. It's a little bit just lack of good, like stronger moment. That's going to make us remember this photo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got something potentially here. I don't think we need this green. It kind of takes me out of it, but I am almost feeling like there, I think we're fighting too hard for this photo and the light didn't gift you this picture the way that it probably should have. And what I mean by that is for this really to be a standout for me, A, they need to be in this window because mm -hmm. we have better light there and it's cleaner. Um, here, I'm going to guess you dodged this, like you brought this up a bit with um, in post processing. And so it feels a bit like that. Mm -hmm. That would lead me to guess that. Um, and also, we can't see them enough for it to be a standout. Do you agree, Jenna, or am I off? Yeah, because and there's a the reflection sort of in the way. <clears throat> I think with this kind of photo, it's also like your mask photo in that um, right now, in the last year, everyone's been taking shots from outside the window or shots of kids with masks. You have a photo of a kid in a mask that's particularly unique. And so in the same way, there's the work that's out there of pandemic sort of families inside is, is pretty strong. And so you've got to compete against all of that. And so unless that has like a particularly unique thing, then why bother in a portfolio? I, are, am I being, I always have to feel like I have to check in now. Is this okay? Like, are you, <laughs> am I being too hard or is this all right? Like, does this make sense? All of our feedback? You mean me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> it's Hopefully, much better. kinder than I anticipated, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we basically think you're excellent. And so it's okay to do a couple critiques, right? Oh, we're going to be a little <laughs> bit harder on the you. The rest was amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't dislike this image, but what I'm going to tell you, be, I'm a huge fan of like using motion with purpose and being exploratory within the realms of documentary and uh, adding more artful approaches. For me, what's taking me out of this is I actually like the technique, but I'm not clinging to a particular subject or moment enough for it to hold my attention. The mm -hmm. child on the left feels a little bit blobby um, and that's not actually your fault. That's a matter of, it just was the timing didn't hit right where the light hit right. And I do, I, I potentially like what's happening here, but I do enjoy this crop more, a lot more. Mm -hmm. I, I am more invested in this photo with the crop than I am without the crop, but the light is hurting it. So I don't see anything in terms of the eye to help keep me engaged with her gaze. Jenna, mm -hmm. how are you feeling about it? I feel funny about this one um, in that I sort of like it. Like, I feel like in the right setting, this could be used, you know? Like I could kind of right. see this on, as a print or in a series. Right. Where it's like, doesn't need to like explicitly make sense. Are these your kids, Olga? Uh, no, these are actually, our friends' kids. So when Jenna says a series, if it's not your kids, yeah. Um, in terms of maybe this could be a precursor or like an entry point into a series, maybe you have a black and white series of families that are very almost free range, outdoor, um, you know, really exploratory in terms of content, subject matter, and technique that is a lot more art forward maybe this would work for me as a single i'm still like on the fence if i'm gonna remember it ash do you have any well you know how i am i love anything that's like gritty and funky right so, <laughs> that's just how i i'm drawn to work like this in particular i almost wish i could like i'm not sure if you 
that made multiple exposures of this. If there's like something right before or after that maybe gives like a little bit more, but I love that you got creative with, you know, the motion of the water and things like that. Um, and I agree 100% with what Jenna said is in the right setting, this would 100% work. Um, there's something at about At the end of the day, something about it. Go ahead, sorry. She's frozen, but I can guess what she's going to say. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. I think she's going to say something to the effect of at the end of the day, it's up to you and you have to put workout that, that you enjoy. Right. Am, I back? Am I yeah. back? Okay, what were you no. going to say? Actually, what I was going to say is at the end of the day, the darkness in her eyes oh, is taking me out of the photo. Damn Sorry. I guessed. I tried to guess what you're going to say, it. but I was wrong. Uh, but I thought you, I knew you. So then Kirsten, do you think she could bring that up a little bit with a brush? No, I think that if you notice where the light is, there is no light on the eye. There's no catch light. There's, there's no nothing. And so it's just the figure. But like Jenna said, I agree in the right setting, in the right body of work or uh, being matched with before and after it might make for really a beautiful series. Okay, uh, really quickly. The only thing holding me to this photo is dad, but because we have one, two, three, four, five subjects in the photo, I don't think there's enough happening with the rest of the subjects for me to like linger on this picture. That's like my feeling of this. Yeah, like dad is strong, but the other moments don't support it as much. No. It be more extreme. I actually I need, I need like that's reaction or like when we say cause and effect or like action reaction, like he's got a great reaction, but I don't, there isn't enough uh, visual tells to support why he's feeling that way. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Like it looks relaxed, but he looks stressed. Whereas right. if it looked create chaotic and he looks stressed, right. that would be a good pairing. Right. Right now, it just is like he has sunscreen in it in his eyes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We're guessing no. We need this kid screaming, right? Or or this one yawning, or we just need something to support that. Um, and when you have more, when you add more and more subjects to a photo, it makes it more and more complicated. Not only in terms of it, visual imagery, but in terms of the job of the photographer to like work and stay with it really hard and then hope and pray to the photo gods that the other behavior comes together to support what we see happening with one subject within five. Right. What's really I, great is that you're clearly seeing something, right? Like you yeah. have a point of view. And so just like anybody with a point of view, sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it's not going to, or you have to work a little harder to get the extra things to add to, add to your point of view. Um, yeah. As opposed to being like, we don't know what you're saying here. Right. I still know what you're getting at, which I love. Right. I was, gonna, I was thinking that almost if it was just dad and the kid on the phone, because that's what I thought of when I saw it. it's like, they're on this boat, paddle boat or whatever. And the kid's on the phone and dad's probably like, get like, we're outside, like having fun. And you're on the free, like my kids do the same thing. Can I have the phone? You know, that's, I think that's the only way it would kind of, um, if you emphasize those two things of dad being like, dude, what are you doing? But yeah. This is a good composition, but for me, um, technically, remember, like I said, uh, I think that it's not that it's um, that there's noise. It's not that. It's that uh, we don't have great light, and and while I, I I really appreciate the framing of this, I just feel like the moment itself is just action and not enough moment for again to hold my attention yeah. yeah like this one doesn't reflect the other things that you have to say like this the strength of oh. your point of view again the other ones are so much stronger or so much more you in my opinion same with this uh you know i think also placement here like your physical placement could increase the chances of success with this photo i'm almost imagining a little bit more to the right and above so we have a hand above trying to feed and then the other hand who I assume is mom figure saying no and then the baby crying like um it's almost a bit passive in what is being said and 
I don't know if that's because like this all of a sudden happened and you were like, oh God, look at what's happening here. And didn't have enough time to be in front of the moment. Is that, would that be accurate, Olga? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm going to beat this word to death, but like, again, with, having seen your point of view in the other photographs, I actually think this could be a good photograph for a different photographer, if that makes sense, like at a different level. I actually think this is funny, but it doesn't, the, your other ones are so much stronger and so much more specific that I don't think it matches your portfolio. True. I feel the same way. But somebody else might put this up and I would be like, great. Okay. That's that, was very few, that was very few photos out of what you sent us. Yeah. And the ones that you have are outstanding. Yeah. Uh, strong light, strong composition, strong moment. Uh, they all feel like they belong to the same photographer. Uh, it would absolutely make me want to hire you. Uh, I love seeing a combination of straightforward, uh, very literal storytelling with a little bit more of abstract storytelling. Please just craft this and then replace it with wherever it is. And, um, you know, this more like really more conceptual approach to mood and how children feel. And again, that like art forward um, point of view, it's really nice woven into uh, the, the different approaches that you have. And overall, you have a really strong portfolio. Thank you. Okay, yeah. so like, did you dabble in photography before 2019? <laughs> Or to just come out of your body that you were just so good at it. Oh, I just so wanted to, I didn't understand how to take pictures of my kids. And I started researching because I saw all these great Instagram photos. And I was like, what filters do they use? Because my photos don't look the same. And then somehow Instagram just showed me um, like an ad for creative life. And then I ended up there. And then I understood that I need more than a filter. I just need to learn how to do this. You yeah, probably so got my class for like 99 cents because that's about how much the going rate is these days. Um, <laughs> so I'm super psyched that you got all that information. For no, actually, I paid like the whole subscription for a year <laughs> and I looked through all of them in one day. So <laughs> I don't well, know I feel how you got out of it, but yeah. <laughs> I feel like your eyeball filter is the, the thing that worked out well for you here. Who cares what yeah. filters you have, but just whatever you're seeing. You must have uh, seen this way before. I don't know. Yeah, Olga, you're a beautiful photographer and a little bit of me hates you. And so we're just going <laughs> to let that go. And <laughs> you want to know the cool thing? Olga lives uh, in Germany and not that far. And I've been telling her for like the past year, I'm like, okay, when this pandemic is over, guess where you're coming? Yeah, that's right. The great city of Vienna, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming to photograph my family. Yeah. Anyone would be really like lucky to have you come shoot. You have a beautiful point yeah. of view. You clearly are a fast learner. I'm really curious. Um, do you have a, did you go to university? Yeah. I said did you, you just let me guess. No, oh. I'm going to guess. Did you, I didn't hear what you said. So did you get some sort of either math or science degree? No. You didn't? No. Because your technical is really good. And usually I find that with people that have, like, um, if, if in their previous life they were, like, an engineer or a mathematician or something within that. So what is your, what is your degree in? I studied literature. And really? I started to work. Yeah. And I've started to work on film. And I think it's probably oh. because I've been watching movies for like yeah, that's why. years and years. So I, I yeah. just somehow compositions is something that my eye is trained to see. Yeah. Like I think um, subconsciously. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think literature makes sense too, because sometimes storytelling. I know I, yeah. For me personally, I'm often trying to photograph what I wish I could write in a novel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like, I wish I could write fiction, but I can't. And so I think I'd try to photograph instead. There's um the DFP did a beautiful interview with Michaela. Did you watch it? Not yet. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, it was super inspiring for me. And um, she because she comes from the film world as well. And to hear her reference all the film her favorite films and how that inspires how she shoots, what was in 
I mean, beyond inspiring and educational and really creatively intuitive. And while that's not my drivers, uh, I really appreciated the, the, um correlation between the two and i feel like if if your background also like this love of film i think you would enjoy her interview as well but the, it all actually makes sense to see these um so yeah i mean i Jenna, okay you have so any much for taking yeah. the time just to expand quickly um you're worried that you you only shot your own family um or you need to get more than just your family but looking at this portfolio um uh, I wouldn't know that. So you can, I just take that stress off your shoulder. This is fine. Yeah. Like you can use this portfolio. Um, and then also I want to say, even if it is just your family, I still think you can use um, your family in a portfolio. So if that's a message for you and for anybody else that's just shooting their family, it's a matter of what you see, not, not who you're shooting yeah. really, especially to get yourself out there. I don't think it matters at all. There's lots of really wonderful photographers that just shoot their family that people obsess over. Right. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't want you to feel insecure about it. Uh, yes. Hey, there's a quick question from Alex asking um, about the difference between delivery to a client and what you include in your portfolio. Um, I'm a, mu a much, I mean, let's rewind and try and say that again. Uh, <laughs> to give you an idea, Alex, when I'm photographing a full day in the life, my average shoot rate is anywhere between like 4,500 and 7,500 images. It all depends on circumstance, uh, environment, how many kids are in the photos, how old they are, activities they've done throughout the day that will all play a role in how many pictures I make. Of those, my average delivery rate per client, and this is honestly, for every client is somewhere between 170 and 250 photos. That really is of the whole day. That's about how much I deliver. Then if we're going to break that down even more, maybe one, maybe one makes it into my portfolio. So again, I've been photographing families for 15 years. So I have a lot more to pull from in terms of portfolio. So I'm a little bit a lot more um, picky about what I choose uh, in terms of what is portfolio worthy. But I feel like there's a substantial difference between what I feel like is strong enough to deliver to the family, what's representational of my time with them, what I believe that they would want to print or hang on the walls, uh, what they're going to appreciate versus what is truly gonna represent my point of view, uh, my best of the best work, um, filling gaps in terms of mood, uh, idea, theme, uh, relativity in terms of the general public uh, appreciating my work, what's going to be memorable. They each have their place uh, in terms of where they go, delivering to the client, slideshow, social media, portfolio. For me, the portfolio is the best of the best, but also coming together as a collective body of work that 100% I feel good about making a statement. Like, this is how I see, this is how I'm gonna see your family. And that is a lot more particular in terms of picking one or two photos per session. Jenna, do you have anything to add to that or? Yeah, add? when I'm shooting, like my, my rate of portfolio is probably like 50%. Everything I shoot is really good. So it all just makes the portfolio, you know? It's hard it's just me. an undiscovered talent. That's all. I mean, it's hard for me to narrow it down, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's unlike Kirsten's experience. So I don't know. I'm very unrelatable in that sense. <laughs> I, think I, think, I think it's important to point out to the other people watching that, okay, most people don't start shooting in 2019 and have this many portfolio worthy photos. No. So like, that's the first thing. So there's like, this is a rare, rare thing. And a lot of times, what we're telling our students is, okay, you're going to use, you know, you have to have something in your portfolio, but you're going to improve and get better. And so you do have like placeholder photos, right? Photos that are like, okay, this is good, but I want to make something even better. And you can switch those out. So um, Olga, you're just like a little child prodigy. <laughs> and, <laughs> but most people don't have this. I mean, I'm trying to think if I had like photos like this worthy after, um, you know, a little over a year shooting. And no. I mean, I did, I'm telling you, I did spot colored <laughs> birds. I had spot colored birds on shoulders of, <laughs> hey, 
I do have real advice, which is <laughs> that even we all we all get discouraged. So that's actually the reality is that when you go to put your portfolio together, it makes you want to die. And so the real thing to do is to actually talk to your friends, because sometimes your good work starts to piss you off. And then another day you think you're a genius. And then the next day you hate yourself again. So you just sometimes need outside counsel. And sometimes you just need to move things around to be like, how would it feel if I put it in this order um, or this order? And it's a process. So I just wanted to count. Yeah. Give some actual advice there. I feel like I, okay, we're good, Olga, right? We love you. Um, you're amazing. But that being said, like as strong as you are, if I was working with you, I'd be like, okay, so what's next? Like, right. I, like I really feel like I'm a strong proponent of printing stuff and putting on the walls. Um, also, by the way, I just have to say something because I'm really embarrassed. Um, I literally went from working in the garden to coming here. So, and I didn't wash my hands. So I'm not really that gross. I mean, I am gross, but like- <laughs> People are like, whoa, did you see Kirsten's hands? I know. She's been I shoplifting just... today and the tag went off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to get this shit in the ground before I leave for 12 days. Anyways, um, I'm a huge fan of printing stuff on the walls. I know Jenna is as well. And not only- when you're creating bodies of work and putting uh, projects together, which is what I'm doing here. Um, for the longest time, uh, I had a mentor tell me to print what I felt like was the strongest, put it on the wall. And so that I would look at it every day and say, I'm going to shoot better than this and like have that your target. Because while I think you're a very strong photographer, I think you actually have light years to go. And it's very exciting for me of where you're going to be. So to kind of have some targets and be like, every time you have that camera in your hand, you like might glimpse at some of your best and say, okay, I'm going to shoot better than this today. Um, it, you end up becoming your own biggest motivator, right? And it has nothing to do with what other work people are making. It's just about you being your biggest inspiration and also being your biggest push. And I think um, while we're all like really admiring um, where you're at in only two years, which is deserved, I also don't want to be like, oh, this is the best you're going to be because I don't think it is. I think you still have um, so much potential in terms of where your work is going to go in the future. Right. And that's the part that scares the shit out of us, Olga, is <laughs> <laughs> because we're saying it's this good. We know yeah. it's only going like it's going to get better and better. Mm -hmm. And I know you work so hard. So mm -hmm. um, did you take a screenshot, Olga, so you know to put these in? Of course. Good girl. <laughs> I also already marked my calendar with this is like the best day in my life. Oh, oh you snap. <laughs> that's so cute. I'm glad that oh. um, you're feeling good about it because before we got everyone else was on, she's like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, oh, God. stop yeah. it. You're brilliant. <laughs> yeah. you you're, you're, you're a beautiful photographer. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm really excited to see where your work goes. Um, yeah. So that's, that's where we're at. Do so you feel satisfied? <laughs> Doing yeah. <laughs> I feel a little orgasmic now, so I will yeah. just go. <laughs> That's a girl. That's, I think, the best, um, you know, that is the best compliment that any of us could receive is if feedback can make you feel orgasmic. I'm feeling say? very proud of myself currently. Does, do you think that's a tagline somewhere, right? Yeah. Do you think that we could? <laughs> right, should we add that to testimonials? Yeah. <laughs> I, it'll say feeling no need to masturbate <laughs> we've got you covered well we've got you covered we'll pep you up um I guess in terms of like if you have any idea what it's like working with Jenna and Ash and I for a year clearly it's not a hundred percent the most straightforward professional um <laughs> experience of your life not safe for work let's put it that way <laughs> yeah not safe for work that's <laughs> reference but in all and without joking aside um i feel honored to look at your work and i'm really excited to see where it goes in the future mm -hmm. and i'm yeah. proud of you olga. very very much yeah, thanks thank olga. You so much. and thanks for volunteering um because it not only helps you it actually helps a lot more people beyond anything it could it, it could do for you to like share your photos with us so that we can respond to them and share all these ideas with everybody else so thank you very much yay all right, Jen. That was cute. So that I am not well. a prodigy. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, like, now I gotta is, go I'm so psyched to go after Olga now <laughs> with all my raw files. 
Um, is this Christine? This is it Christine. Is. But I do, I have to leave in 20 minutes because I have a prom shoot. So, so that's fine because we, we went a little over with this last one, but um, ideally 15 to 20 is what our target is. Perfect, perfect. Um, okay, I'm just uh, resetting all the tags. All right, so what I'm gonna do- motion. Huh? Go ahead, nothing, go ahead. No, what I was gonna say is what I'm gonna do is, uh, kind of, we've done this before, um, I'm going to start just going through these images and I'll tag what I see is working. And in the process, can you kind of describe uh, what this time was with, with Christine? If you had any challenges, what you felt found, because um, just for all of you that know, Jenna has been working with us for what was supposed to be a year and now like a year and a half because of COVID. And um, so we're very used to your work. We know where your progress has been made. Um, so anything that has seemed to become easier for you as well, if you could share that, that would be great. Okay. Sure. So I, we were, Christine was in town. We were just visiting. I brought my camera and, um, cause I don't, I don't, uh, my kids are older. I haven't really shot a lot of little kids lately. So I felt like when I was shooting that I was really up in their faces. And then when I looked at the photos, I thought I'm so far away. I can't believe it. So, um, and it was really super bright. So um, there were a few times where I was, I, I have a relatively new mirrorless camera. So I thought, oh, this is great. I'm gonna go above, but I couldn't see anything on the screen anyway. So it, it didn't really matter. But, um, and then there were a few points, just the camera was new. So I, I flipped some wrong switches, but- um, is, is this the new Canon mirrorless? It's the, it's new to me. Yeah, so yeah. it's the EOS R. So it's been out, I think, a few years. But um, so that's the one that I'm using. And um, yeah, so, you know, it was just, it was harsh light. It was, you know, people in the way is this whatever. So it's, it's kind of usual. But I really, when I left, I thought, oh, this is like the best thing I've ever shot. You know, and, but like everything, I kind of feel like that. And then I look at them a week later and I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's the roller coaster, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so in uh, like first uh, reactions for me is there is a huge change in from beginning working with you until now uh, in terms of your use of light, you're really embracing highlights and shooting where the light is best and acknowledging where the light isn't the best. Um, I think you're doing a really great job of that. Um, I do have a comment about, are you using a 24 to 70? The 24 to 70. I try to keep it at 35, but. So I, I this might be shocking for Jenna. I just bought a 24 because I'm ready to start playing with different focal lengths and I'm not the biggest zoom uh fan basically because it makes me super lazy and so I do now have the 35 and the 24 and it's interesting because I did my first professional shoot with it uh over the weekend I shot about mitzvah and as much as I love the 24 I realized that there are only particular times when it really works for me Otherwise it can be super wide, like soup, like almost too wide. And in the beginning, I noticed you were shooting them with the 24. Um, Jen, you are muted in case you're trying to talk. I think she's on a phone call. Oh, are you? my son just called me. So sorry, oh, okay. I'm listening, no, no, no. but I, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I just didn't know if you're trying to converse with me. So when you said, you know, I thought I was really close. And then I looked at the photos and I realized I was far away. I think that's because you were shooting at 24. And that is actually what I discovered with now having a 24 is that unless you are right up all in their shit, um, 
it's not going to feel super close. Uh, I much prefer using the 24 when there's a lot of subjects uh, or subject matter in the frame because I can I can really feel that frame. But otherwise, you're actually going to have to wherever you're standing. A lot of times, I feel like you're going to have to take even another foot foot and a half closer with that 24 to to feel like we're in there and in the moment. That's my first uh, my first reaction in terms of when you said. Feel like I was really close, but when I looked, I wasn't. I mean, even on 35, which is my preferred, like, or I think it works the, the best for most people, is um, <clears throat> it just could be comfort level too, right? If you're not so used to being close to people, it feels right. different. And then you just, it, I, what I like about that is that it's just kind of like a, a literal equation. You just start stepping forward once or once or twice, and you begin from there. It feels very attainable to me to change. Or you do like me, and you're just shoot on. 20 millimeters and you're just way up in people's shit all the time yeah and you move back because you're yeah. like wait I'm really close to this person <laughs> that's my problem too I'm always too close I'm way close um any initial feedback from you Jenna as I'm going through these I was just thinking the same about the light I was thinking that it's actually a great scenario to put yourself in so busy so such specific light and Kind of neat that like would you have been comfortable in this situation before or no you were comfortable no. yeah yeah um also is your timestamp accurate was this around noon yes okay so this is a good thing just like learning lesson for anybody that's watching um when you've got this kind of light which is incredibly like it's like pretty much directly overhead uh, you cannot fight against this light. You basically have to work with it, in my opinion. You have to meet her for the highlights. And a lot of the times you're going to have to wait until your subject subjects the things that are important to you kind of like turn into the light. Um, and I mean, the, the deal with this light is you can just set it and leave it there. Leave your camera there and then just keep an eye on the light. For example, this works. I mean, is it a great photo? Not necessarily, but um, just because it's just process putting a shoe on, but it's in fantastic light, right? The moment the foot is out of the light, it is not a photo to me. And it's fine. Like having a contact sheet isn't about saying, oh, Jen, here's a photo that's shitty, right? That's not the point of it. And that's not the point for anybody. I want people to think of their contact sheets is simply like, process from getting to a, a non-photo to a photo, right? We don't care about all the photos that aren't good. We don't care about all the photos you didn't make. It's simply the process of going from no photo to a photo. Um, and I just think that's like really important to talk about uh, as I'm going through this contact sheet. And also I think because I, I, um, because I haven't shot a lot, you know, like nobody has, but I feel like I was also rushing a bit because I was so excited to be outside and, you know, I had some fun subjects and it was a fun place and I hadn't been there in a while. So I, I think, you know, I could feel that I was um, not taking as much time as I should have. It doesn't feel rushed to me, Jen but maybe you're shooting things that aren't really that interesting to you. Is that what you're saying? But you're just shooting anyways. Right. Like I felt like I was, I didn't necessarily um, find the right spot. Yeah. You know, especially in the beginning, I was kind of just, you know, oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun. You know, kind of thing without um, okay. slowing down. And well, we've talked about that before in class too, right? That sometimes when you're having so much fun or something's really great, your memories of it are <clears throat> all the fun, great stuff. And then you have to go, wait, am I actually getting this on camera? Like, right. We all have to deal with that, right? Because we're like, oh, this is fantastic. But am I working? Not that you're not working, but we've had this discussion anyway. Jen, I'm going to uh, just take a moment. Uh, I, I quickly went through these to see if you adjusted. Do you know what your error was in this bathroom scene? Yeah, I'm like on a 30th or something. <laughs> something yeah. Crazy. And so what do you need to do to fix it? I need to adjust the ISO and um, yeah. yeah, yeah. The ISO yeah. just needs to be at like 1600, 3200. You're inside. I mean, we have some light, 
but we're shooting against the light. So that's gonna increase the need for um, a higher ISO and that'll bring up your shutter. I don't mind the one that is um, movement, the one that I tagged, but I don't think movement was your intention. That's the thing. No, no. And it was just like, I had the camera on my shoulder and then I wasn't expecting her to go up on the sink. Yeah. So I like that one though. The, the movement one. Well, yeah, the one that I tagged in the beginning or the yeah, later one? Yeah, 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 okay. Um, also, this is an issue with the mirrorless, is it can fuck up your knowledge of technical if you are not constantly checking yourself. Because what I'm guessing is, Jen, you pulled up the camera, you saw that your exposure, it was over, um, underexposed, right? Because you're at 200, your settings were at 200 at one fifteen hundredth of a second or whatever it was because you're outside, right? And you're inside, you didn't expect to shoot. You're like, oh, I'm gonna pull up my camera. It's underexposed. So you just fucking dial that, um, the shutter speed, right? Because yeah. you're looking at the, uh, the viewfinder and you're like, oh, it's too dark. Oh, now it's lighter, right? Instead of checking yourself and being like, wait a minute, what's my shutter speed? You're not looking at it. And then you're not double checking what your ISO is. So I'm saying this out loud. It is something I've done a million times as well, is if you transition over to a mirrorless that has an electronic viewfinder, I feel like it's imperative that you're constantly checking your settings and not relying on what it looks like through the viewfinder in terms of shutter speed. Just gonna, that's my little. Right. And it is, yeah, with the mirrorless, it's really tricky because it looked great on the screen, you know, in the viewfinder, it looked perfect. And then I yeah. didn't realize till later how low I had gotten, so. Right. It's also fun to go back and forth between mirrorless and non-mirrorless SLRs and see what happens to your exposure then. <laughs> right. The first thing I do is check my ISO uh, when I put that camera to my face to make sure that I'm really making the right decision with my ISO. All of this, I think you could have been closer, Jen, physically. Yep. Me too. Because in it's this case, COVID, maybe you were like, "Wow, well, <laughs> right? yeah." No, we're well, so I'm like, anybody. I'm six weeks past my second shot. Christine was all past her second shot, so we were good. But, but we just haven't done it in so long, right? Right, right. Do you know what? Tristan and I stand six feet apart when we're outside <laughs> from each weird. other. Yeah, in a social setting, to like, because it feels like socially respectful. We stand like in a circle. We're nowhere near each other. It's fascinating to me. That's amazing. You're definitely getting great moments. You're like, you're hitting the moments. It, it is a challenge when we've got the two qualities of light. We've got them in the darker quality of light, the shadow, and then we have the background in the higher quality of light or the highlights. I would keep an eye on that there are times, you notice there's times when there's these highlights. Um, here, we've got highlight here on her hand. We have, see the, the um, ice cream right now is in that highlight. I would be prioritizing that and waiting for like these really specific moments that happen in the highlight. Also with that much, noise and what i mean by that is um a lot of confusing elements a lot of distraction behind them i would be bringing your aperture i'll be opening up your aperture you're at five six i think you can shoot this at two eight or a little bit uh wider than that just to make sure that um we're not competing against the background
So this is tough. Again, identifying what our background looks like and are we gonna be able to separate what's most important from all the other competing visual elements? Um, right now we are, we've got this nice space around her, but we don't know how she feels. So we're gonna have to have a really great um, gesture or uh, body movement in order for it to be a strong photo. I might be coming over here, Jen, and shooting high and down because- we'll get our, a little bit of that later. Okay, because our cleanest background is actually the ground. Right. I don't think I went down. I didn't think I shot down, but I did move over. Thank God, look at Christine. <laughs> She's so great. She's such a great mom. My she goodness. is an amazing mother. She's so great. She's wonderful to be around. Jen and I met her six years ago. Were you even yeah. pregnant? I, I was pregnant. Even... Yeah, it was 2015. Yeah. Mama Queen. That was the, <laughs> the week of Mama Queen. This is also where, if anything, Jen, you've got that 24 to 70, I'd actually be pushing it all the way to 70 to create a bit of compression, again, to separate them from the backgrounds, especially if you want to just get this great photo of a, of a bubble coming to her and maybe her like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, she's going to try and pop the bubble. So I'm going to be waiting, envisioning that photo. <laughs> Jenna, all I can think about with this photo is people looking at things, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Who did that? Was it? Uh, it was in, uh, Liv? yeah, I think it was lit. Was it Liv? I think. I think so. Yeah. A whole series yeah. where you can't see what they're looking at. They're just looking at things. They're just looking <laughs> at things, right? But they were particularly well done. Yeah. They worked together. Okay. So, and then just, it's not, just it's not contradictory completely. So yeah. Jen is that, uh, I think the Zoom. Um, for an Enneagram six is a mind fuck. <laughs> it's too many options. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, I think if you can get a prime on that camera, that that's, that would be my advice. <laughs> Cause then just takes one thing away for you. You do have some great moments. Are they the best composition? No, they are not, but they, um, and we don't have any good light, but you have really good moments here. That like got really? a little easier here. Yeah, you getting closer like this is much better. Well, the interesting thing here is, um, cause you like a lot of detail stuff, right? Like I find, yeah, you've yeah. got some great, you know, like um, I'm trying to think of like the hiking photos that you took, like you've got shots of um, almost like anonymous, not detail, maybe that's the wrong word, but I, I feel like you're pushing yourself here, which I like seeing. More content, environmental content, yeah. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm excited to see um, the end when we look at just the flags. Because that's part of the roller coaster too, when you look at the contact sheet <laughs> and then you're like, oh, what do I do? This is fantastic. I love this photo a lot. We actually don't need much of her, even that. Have you delivered these yet? No, no. This is gonna save you a lot of time. I know. <laughs> We're doing her genius for her. <laughs> oh, I'll volunteer. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Clever. But again, I was looking at them and I love them. And then I was looking at them and I'm, I hated them. So yeah. I, I, you know how you just said, ask your friends, ask, ask yeah. people to help you. So this yeah. is go live. <laughs> Go, go, go live, live on Facebook. <laughs> That's the answer. Don't worry, you'll love them when we narrow it down. <laughs> it's just the roller coaster. 
Okay, so I'm going through and I'm gonna pick my favorites. And then what we usually do is Jenna will look at them again and then pull any that I'm missing. This is where you got really close and where that really wide works for me. I have this series here. I, I love this, the, the one hand coming in. Mm -hmm. You've got great light on the hand. I feel like I'm right there. It's like almost my hand reaching out. I really like that one a lot. See, like the foot, like that. Okay, well, it's gone now, but that upper left where she's taking off the shoe, that feels like a gen type of photo to me. That's what I mean by detail. Right. Well, right? she's, the, the shoes kept coming off all day. Yeah. Yeah. So this was like a good, okay. you know, yeah. 45 minutes of the day was just putting shoes back on her. <laughs> so uh, while you're selecting your favorites, I just was going to read a quick question that we had from. Laura Williams Davis, and she said, so that's interesting that you think uh, she should have shot that at a 2.8 or lower. Usually I feel, I hear you say not lower than aperture four. Can you talk of when to know what would translate best? Really? Uh, huh? That I say don't shoot lower than aperture four? I don't know, but I will, I well, I think there's a lot of in the documentary world, this like thought of, <clears throat> Sorry, you guys, I have a cold, so I'm trying not to cough. Um, in the documentary world of, you know, we don't need to be shooting at like 1.8 all the time because we want more story. Right. And more like context, that. content. Right. So, yeah. and uh, Laura, I think in that situation, for example, anything in the background wasn't adding to the story. It was just distracting from it. And that's when, when you want to get rid of those distractions is yeah. when you're going to go to like a 2.8 or um, something, you know, something like that. I really, sorry if I've ever put that out there. I mean, I'm, maybe I have like way back in the day. I don't feel like I have, but um, I feel like every F-stop, every lens, every ISO, every shutter speed has a purpose. And I literally make those technical decisions uh, based on basically three things, circumstance, my objective in terms of what I'm trying to say and any sort of distractions. And those three, thanks babe, those, yeah, those three elements or those three, um, uh, yeah, those, th those three factors are going to help me make a decision in terms of what lens I'm gonna use, uh, what, what all my technical decisions will be in terms of ISO, f-stop, shutter speed, they're all to get me to my ultimate goal, which is what am I trying to communicate to the viewer? Um, and so in that case, yes, there were so many distractions that I kept saying to Jen, push it to 70 to create uh, a lot of compression and that'll help uh, increase bokeh, which will help uh, separate your subjects from your background, which will decrease uh, background distraction or shoot it to eight, that can also help to create that same or solve that same type of problem. Uh, Jenna, do you have anything to add to that or? The same workshop that Christine was at in Denver, um, there was a student, Rachel, who at one point said to us, okay, so what you're saying is there's no hard and fast rules. <laughs> and it's one of my favorite <laughs> sentences because that's the truth. There's like, there's things that you can apply generically, but every situation is so different and there's all different ways to use and break the rules. And the key is to know why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, I agree. Um, these are my favorite from the shoot. Yeah, these are fine with me. I don't think you need to go back. Um, I think we've got great variety that show their relationship the fun that they were having, I would crop this. We don't need um, Christine's face in here. We can, <laughs> this is enough right here. Um, we've got good moment, good action. I really feel like they're kind of like on this little vacation together. My and I don't think, sink. huh? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just saying that my favorite is the sink. This one? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Okay, go ahead. Jen, how long were you with them? Um, I guess it was about three hours or so. Okay. Maybe three and a half hours, but you know, we stopped and we ate and we were talking and right. so we were visiting. It wasn't, I turned our visit into a photo shoot. <laughs> Clever. Surprise. Basically. That's smart. 
<laughs> well, I just, I just wanted to illustrate that. So you had three hours and you, I think when we started off, you had, it like was over 800, 887 or something like that. And what are we down to? 21 of my favorites, 21. like my absolute favorites. This right. would be like what I would select for a slideshow or whatever. Right. So Plus, I just wanted to show, illustrate that that's how it is when you hear Kirsten saying, you know, I go from taking sometimes 7,500 uh, frames in a full day of day session and I get it down to 200. You can see that, you know, that's that process. Of being mm -hmm. and that. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is a great like number a, for portfolio to give to her too, right? She's not expecting anything. This is awesome. Do right. you feel better uh, them like this? It's fun to see all the best ones next to each other, I think, right? Jen? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so the loser edit is 48, and I just took the best from each scene. Yeah. About 21. Right. Yeah, that's about average. It's a little bit more than uh, uh, what I deliver percentage wise to my clients. So I think you did a great job. And your first time out, you're just really working with light better. You're pushing yourself. You're shooting a bit outside your comfort zone. I'm super proud of you. You did a great job. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going and look at, we got you done right on time. I okay. know this is so great. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you. Nailed Thank it. you. <laughs> Bye. All right, so oh, thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Thank, Thank you. Jen. Bye. So then you take over Ash in terms of your, the controls. Okay. Oh, I'm like, can you stop sharing your screen? But then I just realized it's me staring at myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to talk with Lauren and give me one sec because I'm going to pull up your stuff, Lauren. And first I wanted, um, wait, hold on one sec. You can unmute yourself. Let's see. Okay. If Sorry. There we go. Perfect. And I, um, so you had written me and you said, um, you've updated the homepage and the family sections so we can focus on that. And that you basically have three components of your business, which is wedding, doc, fam, and birth. And you're trying to decide whether to make weddings into a completely separate website or if the immediate redirect is enough. Um, and you also said you're kind of downplaying birth at the moment. So, um, yeah, so tell me a little bit about, before I start sharing my screen, I want to hear a little bit about how much of your business is family versus wedding and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I do, right now I've been doing about five weddings a year, which is not a whole lot. And I had not previously been sort of... Um, looking for wedding clients it was just you know they would come along so i wanted last year in january i re um redid my website to really focus on weddings because i was really trying to move away from the let's i'll go to the park and do a lifestyle family session so i knew i wanted to do documentary family but i my what i really want to be doing is weddings and events birth those are the main things that I'd like to do okay. or family, but more day in the life, um, which well, I haven't had a lot of buy-in for <laughs> so far in my area. Okay. So let me ask you, since you mentioned that, how have you been promoting your day in the life? Um, I haven't, I haven't really promoted my business much at all because I'm getting enough as I go. Um, Great. Uh oh. The only thing I did was I joined, a, I froze for a minute. It's a co op uh, in the city next, Santa Barbara, north of us. Okay. So it's basically, he has four photographers. So I joined that and that's gotten me a lot of leads. Oh, so awesome. I'm getting enough leads um, doing what I'm doing. So, oh, that's the, great. Yeah. But the thing is that I, I feel like um, I'm not advertising on my site and, and my Instagram, the type of family sessions I wanna be doing. Right, so that's I, what you need to be showing. Yeah, so I worked with Kirsten um, about a month ago on my portfolio and I just got it up onto my website now, um, picking out the best documentary style um, images instead of the lifestyle images. But when you go to my website, you see first, it starts with wedding. Right. And then you can quick, 
right away you can click on family, wedding, or birth. But I don't know if that's enough differentiation, I guess. Um, so just to start off with, because one of your questions was, should you move weddings to a separate site? And my feeling on that, or my suggestion to people is that I don't see really any reason to, if your wedding work and the brand you stand behind for your wedding work um, is similar to your brand for how you approach family work as well. So if you're shooting weddings and more of a documentary approach, I mean, you might have some portraits and things like that in there, but if you're shooting those in a more of a documentary approach and it's not like these super, you know, stuffy wedding photos in comparison, um, I think you can absolutely leave them on the same site and it'll save you a lot of headache. And not only that, but it allows family clients that come to your site to see that, oh, she does weddings and my cousin Jane is looking for a wedding photographer or someone that's having a wedding to remember, oh, you know what, you know, we're having a kid, um, Lauren does birth photography and family. So it allows for that to kind of wrap up. And as long as your, um, like I said, your brand, you have to kind of think of it as an umbrella mm -hmm. and you have like this main foundation of what it is you stand for. What do you want clients to walk away with and what, what you want them to feel no matter what you are photographing for them, whether that be a birth, a wedding, a family, um, you know, fresh 48, whatever that is. Um, and that you can have that foundation and then talk more drilled down for each different section of that. So that's like the little prongs of the umbrella. Okay. That's what I, yeah, that's what I was hoping to do. I mean, that was kind of my thought too, that then uh, it is the same, I, the same style. I'm definitely, you know, I call it family photo journalism and right. wedding journalism because I'm really focusing on the moments, not so much on the staging and the, you know, portraits and the right. stylized. So um, since we're on your website, I'm going to just point out some things I like. I really like that uh, right away you say where you're located um, and where you serve. This is a really big thing that we see missing a lot of times on websites. So good job on that <laughs> straight off the bat. Um, and also I see you have some testimonials going across here. And I think that's also awesome because um, you know, it really puts you as an authority there. And, you know, um, we basically buy on other people's recommendations a lot of times and what they're giving, the information they're giving us about that. Um, one thing I will say is, have you done work on your branding? Not, not a little, not a lot. Okay. So when we're talking about branding, we're talking about more than just like how things look, like the color or your logo. That is also part of branding. But beyond that, it's about, you know, what you stand for with your business. And like we talked about a second ago of what you want your images, how you want your images to impact people, um, clients when they're with you. And so the first thing I see, there's nothing wrong at all with this statement. And I think it's really uh, great that you made it really big. That's what I want to see when I come on a website is like, okay, what is this person about? Um, so you have right now, because life's real moments are what memories are made of. And that's absolutely true. Um, my only concern with it is that if you go to a lot of other wedding photographer sites or documentary family photographer sites, they're going to have some very similar variation of this. Mm -hmm. And so as more and more photographers are popping up, um, you know, taking a more photojournalistic approach to weddings or, or to uh, family photography, we need to be really careful that we have things on there that are going to differentiate us. And I mean, a lot of times we hope that our images can do that and they should play a big role in that. But we also need to back that up with statements that are true to us and what we provide that is different and the impact we're having. So that's gonna be like the very first thing I would recommend for you is getting really clear on what, you, what you're all about and what it is you want people to walk away with. You know, I. I talked about this before on lives and I'll probably say it, you know, year after year, because I look at so many uh, photographer sites that come in for DFP listings. And the biggest thing I see 
is there's this consistency with um, how people describe what they're doing. And it's always like, you know, you're, or you're beautiful mundane or you're the, the uh, real moments in whatever, or um, your, what is the other one that I always say, my mind's going blank, um, or to be treasured for generations, right? And those are really true statements and they're really great statements, but when everyone's saying them and they're you know, deciding between photographer A, B, and C, at that point, that's not telling us anything really about what you're doing differently about your personality and those kind of things. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. And I've heard it before. Um, and I can't seem to get to a point where I find wording that is original, that does get to the heart of what I'm about. I just, it's, it's, it's hard. I, I like that Ash pushes you to figure that out. It, yeah. It's I, even I'm like, yeah, I will tell you, uh, Lauren, that people hate me during that process because I'm often like, okay, this is really good, but let's go back because um, like there's more there. There's something, and it, it does require a lot of, you know, introspective work and um, things to consider and questions to ask yourself. And even sometimes reflecting back on, you know, your life's path and your story and why do you see the world the way you do and all of those things. Um, so it really has to do with who you are as a person. Now, there, that's not to say you can't come up with something a little bit more generic that's not so close and personal. It's just, it's really hard to keep up with that facade that's not like exactly true to who you are. Um, but yeah, so the way to go about doing it is starting with looking at who you are and like, taking a look at your photographs and, and thinking, okay, what is it that I see? What is it that when I go to a wedding, what am I looking at that is different from other people, right? Um, and, and another way to do that is even to ask people for, um, you know, their feedback or, you know, it doesn't even have to be photographers, but asking them, hey, can you describe my photos um, what they look like aesthetically. So like some people might give adjectives such as bright, cheery, you know, um, like colorful, vibrant, um, as well as what they feel like. And, and in that case, it might be like, you know, emotional, joyful, you know, connection. And from there you can start drilling down and saying, okay, what is it? Why am I drawn to these things? You know, let's start. I, I can I jump in too? The other thing is you can pay attention to how you talk to people about your work. Like maybe there's something you say to potential clients that's particularly unique to you that could work as well. Right. Sorry, I was sitting on my foot and it fell asleep. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Oh. I mean, Ash will do most of the talking, but I do, I just want to support what she's saying in that I, I think about like when I look at websites, I forget the majority of them, unless there's a particularly unique photo right away or a particularly unique um, piece of writing or like a funny piece of writing. That, that's because I enjoy humor, but something particularly interesting or unique about what they've said. And if I, if those two things, one of those two things isn't there, I'll just, I forget about it. Right. The part that's really updated right now is the, like, if you click on the families one. Oh, yes. Okay. That's where I feel like I've just put, I've really updated recently. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, are these images impactful enough or is the, t is the copy? Right. So I will say that this is a great statement. I haven't heard it before. So good job on that. <laughs> I, I, there you go. It used to be on my... That used to be the first, that used to be the bold on the homepage. Oh, great. Yeah. So maybe change it to that. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll change it to that. Right. Yeah, that, like it was that. inside you the whole time. <laughs> because that's, that's later on, I talk more to that in the copy. And I think that's, that's at the heart of it for me that it's, it's a bit of nostalgia, I think, of the sense right. of um, that, you know, this moment is not you know, going to last. And those are the things, it's the little things you're going to want to remember, not you know, right. especially family photography, um, weddings too, but mostly, uh, but anyway, yeah. Okay. So I'll yeah. move that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Put that up 
uh, right on the homepage, slap that up there. And um, I, because I think that's a great statement and uh, yeah. So, and then when it comes to the copy here, I just read through it kind of quickly. Um, and the one thing I'm going to point out to you and something, again, I point out on all websites is anything that you feel is really important that they, that you want to stand out, just bold it, you know, it could even be, um, like certain words here, like the little feet and wild hair, you will want to remember them because you have people like myself who are skimmers. I do like, no matter what website I go on, even my own damn site, I don't even like, I'll write a bunch of copy and then I, I don't even read what I wrote after <laughs> like, you know? So if you have people like me who skim, I'm just looking at the big bold parts. Um, and so you need to, like, I would definitely bold something like moment driven family portraits and day and lifestyle. Um, you know, whatever here you feel is going, I really like this, no hair gel required. Um, that's awesome. So like, this is a statement I would bold, you know, just to uh, easily draw their eye to that if they're like me and a person that doesn't read every single thing. Oh, I do have a question for you. This next line, if you prefer a conventional family session, is that something you enjoy doing? Or is that there to be safe? Safe. Yeah. Oh, I didn't okay. even notice it. Good Exit. Job. Yeah, take it out of there. Yeah. Because that's confusing your message, right? Absolutely. It's actually less, it's actually less safe to be safe, right? Like it's better to be niche and hone in on what you actually want to do. And the thing is, if someone wants that, you know, yeah. if like, hey, I really want this documentary session, but I also would love a couple of portraits or like, you know, something like that, then you can by all means say, oh yeah, we can spend a few minutes doing that. Right. But you know, take yeah. it, it's not a service you're really like putting out there that you want to be, you know, marketing. Good catch, Jenna. And yeah. like I said, I'm a skimmer, so I didn't even see that part. <laughs> I could probably could have told you to bold that now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's make that invisible font. That's right. That's where we're going with that. Um, so, and again, I think the other thing with it is you've done a really good job from just from looking at, you know, the big photos that we have going on here. You have here showing documentary photos. I so, just updated it, so, what's that? I just, yeah, I just updated that. It used to be more lifestyle, but these are the ones um, that I just changed and I feel like yeah for me to say I still offer lifestyle is is not <laughs> helpful you're right it's just counterproductive right so um yeah exactly so it's I also think this is great that you have the um video stuff going on that's something you know for people that can do that that's like a, an amazing little um piece of technology to have on your website because it draws people in more, right? It connects them more with what it is you're doing. Um, I know even a few of our students this past year in the No More Fucking Around, they had people come and video them actually doing a session so people can see how they work, which is also awesome because then people really can understand how documentary sessions work, right? They can see the photographers not like posing and doing all those things. So to-do list. I have, have been wanting to do that for a while. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Um, I'll give you just a quick piece of feedback on the video. Um, it starts off like with the kids swinging and I feel like that's just kids swinging there's less point of view in there. But then when the mom picks up the kid and starts snuggling, there's a little bit more that brings me in. I feel like you should just cut right to that. And like around the inside part where they're snuggling, like go, go right to the moments that you almost would want to make pictures of. Like okay. make sure your video is as strong as your pictures. Okay. Yeah. That's a great, yeah. That's really cute though. Yeah. And I would definitely, even with these, like these little portrait parts, take that out. If you're going to have a moment stopped in there of showing a photograph, have it be a documentary moment so that yeah. you can get out of that. That was a picture. I mean, a video I did for her and I didn't um, update it for using it on my site, but I will. But it's still good. I mean, yeah, there's stuff in there. Just cut right to the good stuff. The good stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like this is, this brings me in much more than the, in the beginning with the swing. Right. 
Perfect. Or like, yeah, I don't need to see Santa, but like, it's cute to see this part where she's tickling him. Yeah. Also, I love this pool photo of the dad, the kid sitting on the dad. I know, I love it too. I feel like that could come higher somewhere that could be featured sooner. Yes. That, um, okay. Because I feel like I'll remember that. Yeah. Okay. So again, like, like this statement here, again, it's, this is, I'm just going to point out the things that I see all the time. And so it's like, these are the things that, about family life you will want to remember. These are the moments that matter. Um, like this is something I see on pretty much every site. It's again, a great statement. You can have it in there, but I would try and find something a little bit more unique to your perspective, what it is you're bringing. The other thing I want to mention is, and this is the hardest part of figuring out what your brand is, is that as photographers, and I, as far as I know, in terms of people who teach about branding and business, I think I'm like the only one that brings this up. I've never seen other people do it. And that's just because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I'm like, just let me all know. But um, <laughs> is that we're always trying to sell the future. So this is a statement that's about the future. And to me, it's a given. Like to me, it's like, well, obviously like it's about wanting to remember. That's what like photos do. They bring back a memory, right? right. And so what the, the real, the real thing you need to do is try and figure out what you're providing them in the present. The first time they see those photos, what is that feeling you're giving them? What is it you want them to see? So that's the, that's the part that takes a lot of like introspective work and, and it gets kind of tricky and those things. But that's how you're going to differentiate yourself and anybody else who's watching is we're always talking about the future and we're selling the future. But, you know, if you can have something that's impactful that they know, okay, I'm going to invest in this costs a lot of money, but they're going to like get a feeling immediately. If you can describe that feeling to them that they're going to get immediately, you're going to have an easier time selling that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, if you reflect on what they do for you, like when Ashley says that stuff comes up for me of how photographs work for me. Right. And so I like, know, oh, I could pull from this when she says that. Um, so if you're thinking about how you're impacted by photographs in the, in the present, that's going to make it a lot easier to figure this out going forward. Right. Like, what is it that's making you click that shutter that you're hoping translates to the family? Yeah. Or, or even photos that have, have been taken of you kind of thing, you know, like like I know what it means to look at photos of my family and how that helps me orient almost like our place and structure in the family. So I, like that's where my brain goes, for example. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard. So that, yeah. So this is then your portfolio, right? The portfolio. This is then, I'm not sure I like them all small. Like, I mean, once you click on it, it's big and then you can cycle through them. Right but I don't know if I like this look. I mean, that's another question I get asked often. Really, there's not, it's gonna be up to you, which yeah. is an awesome answer, but <laughs> it's the truth. There's nothing that's gonna make or break having something in a grid versus, like th there is definitely times when we should have, bam, that one big photo showing up, right? Or, you know, like at the top of, as a banner, but when it comes to a grid versus something that's slide showing through, we just have to remember with a grid, they're having to scroll down with a slideshow or where it's like rotating through a carousel, they're having to wait for the carousel or click themselves. So either way, they're having to do something. So it doesn't really matter. And this way you can kind of have a visual of all of them. And then exactly. I personally don't mind grids at all. Um, I don't mind anything really when it um, comes to going back to Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the, um, the details section, um, Is that where the little girls holding up the lollipop. Do you think the, the kids sitting on the dad would be a better opening image on that page? Maybe. Yeah. Let me look at it. Yes. As, as long as it's going to, what do you have writing? This is the crop, right? Yeah. I, you're going to have to try it to make sure that it, it yeah. fits well up here and stuff. Um, but I think, yeah, it probably, there's something about that image. I remember you submitted that somewhere. Yeah, I think, 
but you can see it. You know, typically, typically a photographer will have one image that I remember and I sort of can place them with that right. photograph. Oh, yeah. And so just for me, I keep thinking like, get that up at the front, like make sure that gets to my mind so that even if I don't remember your name, when I see the photo later, whether it's me or a client, you know, I go, yeah. oh, right. I love that. You know? Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll put it somewhere. You could maybe hey, Laura, even crop it to fit better. Yeah. I just want to interject real quick about the um, carousel versus grid. Uh-huh layout um i've been doing a lot of research with it because of me also working on my sites and this is what i've learned um unless honestly unless the sequencing is really important to you grid is actually responded to better by the outside audience um mainly because we're lazy and so they just want to kind of glance over all the work versus have to click and go through each image individually, whether that's our preference in terms of experience uh, as the photographer or maker, um, that is what my research has uh, ended up <laughs> teaching me is that unless sequence is important, grid is actually a better option. And okay, great. Good. You know, that actually makes a lot of sense anyway, considering now when it like, you know, you think about it, Instagram is a grid, right? Like, so the way we view stuff like that anyway is we're so used to that. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This is really great because my website broke and became a grid. So you know, I just was very progressive. Um, <laughs> what, this is not based on research whatsoever, but the other thing I was going to add uh, based on my thoughts and feelings is that um, a grid almost works, especially while you're building a portfolio too. And then, you know, I can see a place where if you want your clients to view photos bigger in individually, then that might be the reason to switch. Um, whereas if the photos don't require, you know, like a few seconds per image to really absorb them, then the, the grid works as a stronger whole. Um, so you could consider that no, you and anyone can consider that too going forward, but that's not based on research or conversion. <laughs> yeah, <Client> conversion. <laughs> uh, okay, I actually just put the the pool picture in as the header now. So. Oh, perfect. Okay, so uh, I oh go ahead. What were you gonna say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Sorry, I <laughs> you're busy moving fast. In this um, section, I don't know if that's a good idea to have my daughter at the top like that and then me second. I, I just, think it's fine. Okay, because you, you get the idea once you scroll down. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, can you imagine? They're like, I wanted the kid to show up to photograph me. <laughs> but um, no, I think it's fine. I think it's sweet that you included your daughter. So they kind of get, a, you know, a glimpse of your personal life. Um. So one of the biggest things also to think about with your about section is that um, you want it to be more about them than you. So it's okay to add in these cute little anecdotes, like the little family moments, the bare feet, the uh, cricket headband, all of that stuff. Like it's okay to add that, but like this part right here, right next to you, um, this needs to be about them, right? So it, it's like, I'm trying to think of how to explain this with my head pulled. Um, it needs to be, you need to be speaking directly to them. So um, I like, so I want to document you as a visual, um, as a visual storyteller. So I can capture your every day and you know, blah, 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 and go. So you're speaking directly to them and what it's about. And so you say, for me, it's all about authentic moment during photos that re represents who you are. This is okay, because you're speaking about, you know, directly about to them. Yeah. Um, but I think this could be like a little spruced up. And okay. I think similar, when I looked at your, I just glanced briefly at your wedding page. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, it's the same kind of thing. So like, 
you need to bold these parts that are about them to see you as you are the essence of you like anything that's referring to them because we love to hear about ourselves you know when we're reading things like what is this person going to do for me yeah I like that okay. yeah so but otherwise yeah the the biggest thing the very first thing you're going to have to do is looking at your um, branding and figuring out what that what that really is for you and building out from there okay yeah um on my about me page, the, the meet Lauren page, uh -huh. at the very bottom of that, I have like um, the badges for like awards. Great. Um, and on the individual family, birth and wedding, I have just the organizations that I belong to, not the awards. Right. Does that seem like a good choice or should those, should the, awards be with each individual type um no i think that's absolutely fine and you can even no i think under your about is fine okay that seemed like the right place for it i couldn't figure out where to put them that's why well, lauren the one yeah. thing i learned is when you link other organizations you're part of or even like the awards you've been given do uh -huh. not do not make sure it's a hyperlink because I've been told that you don't want them clicking on there and actually finding another photographer. So, so show them, show the icon, but do not link to the website. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. I thought it was good for backlinks. Yeah, like SEO boost. SEO. But this has been something that was recently told to me by like an SEO professional in terms of like keeping people on your site. And they said, make sure that you don't actually have the hyperlink to any other organization that's going to link to other photographers because there's a chance that they will venture elsewhere. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. That's the same thing we hear about like Instagram grids. I mean, I think it's fine. Absolutely fine being here at the bottom, but anything that's going to pull them from your site, you want to try and avoid. Mm. Um, well, you can have the Instagram without it clicking on it you can have right. you know yeah unclickable or whatever yeah that's i that's interesting i never thought about that yeah um there's one other thing i was going to tell you oh i was going to look really quick at one of your guides you have here the family one the family one's the most yeah so let's see cool and this is what you said to them like they have to request this from you, right? Yeah, actually on the family details page, you can click right to it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and I think I'm going to do that rather than have them fill out the contact form because it's basically with a little bit of pricing info. So, uh, well, I think you can give the, here's the thing is you can definitely give an overview of pricing info on your site directly. But when it comes to um, the them wanting further information, you should be collecting their emails because those become leads. Should be. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't. I didn't get that. What? I'm sorry. Um, so <laughs> when they want more information, it's good to collect their email. Okay. Because then they become leads. You can have them on your email list or you can um, follow up with them compared yeah. to, you don't know, like if they're not requesting further information, you never even knew if they were a lead in the first place. Right. Okay. I think I have it on my site where it says starting at such and such price. And then, you know, if you want more information, then you can get the client guide. Right. Um, but I'll have it through the this is so helpful. Thank you. Good. This Did you great. have any other questions or things you wanted me to look at? Um, no, that this phrase right here, your family's That's was good. another one that I was considering moving up. Your family's um, best moments and even your worst ones are so worth documenting. Oh, I like that. It's at the bottom, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. So I might move that to my site. 
absolutely. And you can still have repeating statements on your site as well as on your guide. That's okay. They just become your brand statements, right? Yeah. Okay. That's absolutely fine. But this, this is really funny, this little. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's good. I, like I said, I think your first step is going to be looking at that branding because then from there you can make sure that, um, you know, the feeling you're giving with your website and how it's laid out and all of that is matching to what you're trying to give them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think the colors are distracting on the website? The, Let me the look at it again. Pink and, it's supposed to be more of a pink and a greenish blue, but they came out lighter than I was envisioning. And I'm almost ready to just put it back to black text. I don't know. So have you looked at color psychology at all? No, not much, a little. Okay, so I would, my suggestion would be to kind of have a look at color psychology. And we're gonna be looking at Marie's website in a minute. If her, she, she does a good job of like use of color that's not like overbearing or overpowering or competing. Um, but that's one of the biggest things is looking at like, what is the feeling you're wanting to give people when they come onto the site? And things like, for example, I don't think these are bad colors at all and they don't give me a bad feeling by any means, but just with, with them competing together, God, my nose is getting stuffier by the second. I'm sorry, I sound awesome. Um, what I was gonna say though was I would pick a very, very pale version of this, for example. Yeah, I'm thinking. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I'm gonna look at that somewhere. There's a great website, it's called Coolers. Let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. Coolers that lets you play with colors. And um here you can oops. And like at first it'll just pop up random stuff. And but Anything you like, you can lock in. No, I think I. this is what I used. Yeah, when I came cool. up with colors. Great. But I feel like they're a little overbearing. Like Right, um, but then you can, you know, you can look and you can find different shades of that same yeah, color to, you know, lighten it up. I should go back and do that, I think. Right, so I think that would help. Okay, all right. Um, do you have any other questions? Or no, this was super, super helpful. I was jotting down notes so fast. I wasn't talking much, but thank you. Good. Okay, right. I'm going to check the chat really quick to see if there's any um, it questions. It must be recorded and shown later. That was one question. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you all. That was fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to mute. <laughs> I'm going to, Marie, hi, Marie. I'm going to mute myself and blow my nose for one second. <laughs> Why don't you leave it unmuted? What a beautiful sound we're missing. When my husband blows his nose, he sounds like an elephant. It drives me crazy. It, I like it's the loudest, most unattractive thing. Um, anyways, just throwing that out there. So let's see. If anyone had questions or has questions, you can go ahead and write them and I will check. So Alex asked if 20 photos is decent for a portfolio. I think. I, I mean, anyone, any one of us can chime in on that. But I think that yes. And, and for me, I'd rather have quality, 20 quality photos over 50 so-so yeah. photos. Yeah. What's your feeling, Jenna? I was saying, I think it's a great starting point. Yes. It, it depends on what you've got for sure. And I, I think all of us agree with quality over quantity. Right. Well, my ear plugged up after I blew my nose. So now I feel like I'm like- Swimming. It's awesome. <laughs> Love having a summer cold. I rapid tested myself four times for COVID. 
four times. <laughs> if it's cold. I was like, oh my God. I was like shoving the thing. Yeah. Every, my husband's like, it came up negative four times. I think you're good, babe. Okay, Marie, you can unmute yourself. Okay. So before you even look, my biggest issue right now is photo choice. And it's coming down to an even bigger issue, which is just full, like, just very good out there. Like we need money <laughs> and like, I can't, I'm caught in a place where like, I think I've just managed to get on the second or third page um, of finding Limerick Claire family photographer at all versus like not even people aren't even looking for documentary. They're not looking for photojournalism, like even just the bare bones of, of trying to find someone. So I'm only barely getting started in business and I have desperately got to make enough money so that I can like, like print business cards. So I think that that thought is in the back of my mind with photo choice, because I'm trying to find, I'm going back and forth between the photos that I think are good and that I love to take and that are my favorite ones versus ones that I think potential clients can see themselves having in their own home. Right. And that is my biggest issue. And I know it. <laughs> Do you have an idea of what you think we're going to say? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> but I, I did um, spend a good lot of time. Um, well, yesterday I was supposed to spend a long time going through and really narrowing it down. And then um, three of my hard drives decided to not work with each other. And um, yeah, so I kind of stalled on some of that, unfortunately. So that that's still... That's my biggest issue and I know it. <laughs> so really quick, uh, I Googled from Germany, <laughs> uh, Limerick family photographer and you come up on the first page. Oh, that's so, been two weeks of work to try to get that recently. Like yeah. putting my head down and trying to get it done. And You're right here. Yay. So good. So, good job. Uh, um, go I, I already mentioned this earlier. So so with Lauren, but um, with the same idea in mind, if, if your photos don't stick out in my memory, I'm not going to remember to hire you, yeah. right? <laughs> or I'm not going to remember to want that to be part of my family. So I think you have to go with your best photos and what you love the most, not just because it'll be your perfect client, but because you actually want them to, even if they do walk away from your site to come back. Yeah. Right. right? And if it's just family photos or like a baby is that going to, are they going to come back? You know, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to tell because I feel like um, Ashley kind of understands a little bit because in Germany it'd be similar and we've had conversations. Like we still, more people are getting pictures in front of a white background with a stool than any other kind. Uh, photos in a field lifestyle is just barely even coming in. Um, so like this would be very fringe photography for people. <laughs> And I've had about five or six conversations, um, even recently, where half of them were really excited and interested, and half of them were like, uh, no. Yeah, you're going to get that in Europe. Um, just because Marie, people quick, are part of it. Go ahead. From the, U from the US, you're on the first page also. Woohoo! That's yeah. so great. It's <laughs> Unfortunately, in Ireland, you're not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, everyone else. <laughs> everywhere else, no. That's good. No. Yep, you're, you're on my. You're on my first page. Yes. What about Canada, Jenna? Come on, give it a whirl. <laughs> yeah, Limerick, worldwide. Okay. Limerick family photographer. I did Limerick, Ireland family photographer. Cool. So one thing while Jenna's looking that yeah, up. You're do... on the first page here. Yay. Yeah. That's Good the job. first step of all of this. That's right. <laughs> So one thing I do want to mention to you, just like watching your little slideshow go by, is great job um, having a variety and also diversity uh, flowing through here. I noticed that there's oh my god people with abilities and disabilities, and um, you know different traditions going on and ethnicities and all of those kind of things. So yeah, um, that's really important to me, even. Great. For example, the little boy with Down syndrome, it's not my best photo, but it's more important to me for him to be there. Represented. Yeah, than it being my best photo. Great. Um, 
So great job with that. So we're going to talk mostly about your website in general. I'll also full disclosure, disclaimer, however you want to say it. Um, I will preface by saying that Maria is also one of my students. And I'm trying to remember how your old website looked. Not like this. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so we've done a lot of work um, in terms of we've done the whole branding process, which also, Marie, you can tell people how awesome it is. <laughs> it's very close to giving birth. It is. But then <laughs> once, it, once that baby's out, it feels good. It does. But holy cow. It, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, uh, I've broken things. Yeah, <laughs> but it's important and you do great. So fantastic. I'm so glad I did it. Right. And so right away, one of the things with the branding, again, it's about the statements you're putting out. And also you can see Mar Marie has here a very friendly yellow and that matches a lot of what she wants to put here. You can see like the word celebrate is in her brand statement. And when we think of celebrations and joy, we think of, or a lot of people think of black. No, I'm just kidding. They think of yellow. So um, great choice in that and also great job having your brand statement right when you show up as well as well as the areas you're serving um okay so we're just gonna take a quick look here and again i'm a skimmer right so great job with the bold also something we worked on a lot are you frozen marie Oh, you just weren't blinking. Oh, I'm very <laughs> focused. <laughs> I was like, I haven't seen her blink in a while. Um, so, and another good thing you have going on here is your calls to action um, that are here. I'm just going to click to see where it brings me. It went through. Yes. Good job. So um, great job with that. I'm going to go back really quick. The one thing I did notice is... Um, that your homepage is rather long. Yeah, I actually had a question about that. Um, yes. Because it wasn't that long last week. Um, so <laughs> I'm trying to decide, I was trying to figure out how much you put on that homepage and how much you break up into other pages and what's on the homepage that I just don't need at all. Right. So, yeah. okay, so what we have to think of our homepage of is it's our storefront, right? So we want people getting like that information that they need, such as, yeah, I'm a family photographer. This is what I'm going to do for you present day. What was your brand statement? I'm going to celebrate your story. You're going to celebrate your story. Um, and, you know, all of these things are really great. Having a few testimonial, testimonials is also really great. Um, you know, and these can be how you have them here, or you can sprinkle them, you know, throughout how you want to. Um, this is also a free template, so it's, um, pretty limited in what I can do. Are you using, what are you using? Squarespace. Is it all Squarespace templates free? Um, yeah, they are, but you can buy fancier ones that let you oh, do I see what you mean. You mean yeah, like but this one is a little product. bit more limited. Are you using 7.0 or 7.1? I think it's 7.0. Okay. Uh, just curious with that. But. The other thing, I, since I know it's Squarespace, the other thing I would consider in terms of trying to shorten this stuff up yeah, is for example, so how does this work? And this doesn't matter if this is on your homepage or on a different page, but you can bring these blocks one, two, three next to each other. Ah, uh, yeah. Two, three. And the other thing is, is if you wanted to, you can create an image, um, you know, do it as an image block in, you know, have an image and type over that image what you have here. Choose a date, I join you, blah, 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 to just like, like that. right? So that's an option for shortening this puppy up. Um, Jenna, are you happy? Puppy, I liked it. <laughs> I just saw your face. Yeah. That okay. was a cute sentence. All right, shorten this puppy up. Um, yeah. Also, your lead magnet is way at the bottom. Yeah. Right, and so is your high and Marie. So <laughs> I can say a lot of this has to be shortened up. Okay, shorten it up. Shorten this puppy up. Um, okay, yeah. I I don't know, Ash. You I don't want to. You tell me what what 
my thought is where it should go. But those testimonials look pretty great. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if those should be not not necessarily how they're laid out, but the words should be somewhere. But I don't I don't know where I yeah. can decide where or how. <laughs> yes. No, that's what I was thinking too. Is um, you can sprinkle in, uh, sprinkle them, you know, in different places, you know, all over basically. So, <laughs> and they change so fast. Three is the best. <laughs> no, um, you'll have to be kind of strategic about it, but I would, I would definitely um, put them, I don't know what to say. <sighs> Hold on, let me, I'm gonna have to look more. Uh, slowly. So we have your brand statement. Then we have some images going on here. Then we have further into your brand statement, which is we all want the best for our families, but it's easy to feel like we are falling short. I create real, natural, honest images that reveal this truth. Your life is beautiful and your love is more than that. It is perfect. Great job. Um, just the way it is. And then we have another photo. I'm thinking we're just gonna have to work on the layout a bit, Marie, to be able yeah. to, you know, um, because it's a lot of words, yeah, it, which is fine, but a lot of photos as well. So that's why it's feeling so like it keeps going and going and going. Yeah. Um, we might be able to like some uh, like this I can't wait to show you the love and joy that is like you can shorten these things up by saying the love and joy that is at the heart of what you do every single day period. yeah like that's a great statement right yeah um and you can sprinkle this in as well this next one so it's going to be just a matter of shortening up that copy tightening it up yeah. Um, I really like this, but you really have to pee. <laughs> yeah. I remember those days. Yeah. And I, I, when I was doing that, I kind of feel like it's okay if someone's skimming because there's so much more is enough. And then I was kind of like the idea that it's a bit smaller in case somebody decided to stop and read a little longer. <laughs> right, right. But I like kind of breaking up the one, two, three and putting it. I can't find my mute button. I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah, okay. <laughs> ah. um, yeah, so I'm trying to think. You know, I'm, I, like this is to, this is also too wordy. Yeah. you know what I mean like you sound like my English teachers I mean like all the teachers in my, my entire favorite, life my favorite thing here is I'm Marie and I talk a lot <laughs> so you might want to leave it it's very on brand um, fair warning <laughs> fair warning you see how this is written well I'm gonna talk 10 times more <laughs> no exactly. it's not a terrible thing it's just um you know you have to remember people People don't stay on your site that long. And you, so the biggest thing I want you to think about, Kimberly, with your homepage, especially, is where do you want them to go next? Mm -hmm. Are like, are you wanting them to hit this, learn more? Is that the very next thing they should be doing? Yeah. If it is, that's great. But what happens then if they scroll down more? Do you want them, you know, like what are the steps you want them taking? Right. So even here, it could be, so how does this work? And you could have a button that leads to this page if you wanted. Cool. That right. Makes sense. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, I'm trying to think if your hi, I'm Marie should be even moved up a little bit. You know? Okay, so I want to look at your special offer because that intrigues me. Um, and you have on here, refer friends, get a free session. All summer sessions are 20% off. Oh, that's weird. That block shouldn't be like that. Yeah. You Sometimes just, I have formatting issues. We all do. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just take a fix on that. Um, 
so there's a couple things about this page in that I noticed right away. What is the first thing you're missing? Call to action? Yep. You've worked with me for a long time. There's no call to action. So right. refer a friend. And then you're also telling them that all summer sessions are 20% off. And they're like, cool. But now what? What do they yeah. do? What, what should they do next? Like read about sessions here or should it be book your session now? Like right. what is your call to action? So that's the first thing. And uh, the second thing is, again, this is, you know, a kind of a long page. So I'm going to suggest considering some different formatting. And again, this could look really great with some image blocks with the writing over the top. The other thing I noticed was this easy peasy mini session, slice of life, et cetera. These looked like leaks to me because they're underlined. Mm -hmm. And I oh, want to click them. Yeah. Instead of doing that, you need to change it to some kind of header font or bold or even italics. Okay. But the underline, um, you know, I want to click it and it doesn't go anywhere. So, um, yeah, but the calls to action. Um, and then again, how does this work? You can have this laid out as step one, step two, step three, right? We yeah, want it to look like really that. seamless and easy to do. Okay, so let's look at sessions real quick. Which session do you want me to look at? Uh, actually do weddings, because that's kind of a new thing and I wanted to see how it feels. Your love story, documented, celebrated, cherished. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> have camera, will travel. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so let's see. What first thing I would do is, and you're gonna have to do this in Squarespace, like looking at the design section, is uh, shrink up this. Yeah, see, that's that's where the free templates start falling short. I don't have any control over so, a lot of spacing. So I, when oh, you when you, you put in, sorry, go ahead. You have it. I'll show you where to do it. All right, because basically it has small, medium, large, and then each section you add in. So if you want to add in a video, it has like padding on the top and the bottom. Right. And it's just very. I don't yeah. know how to make that. There's a section on it where a place on it where you can edit the padding of it. Okay, cool. Each section's padding is. So Thank all you. of that stuff is fixable. Good. Yeah, I've been frustrated with that. Um, so again, biggest thing here is going to be like you were doing really good on the other parts, but we want some of these bold, bolded, right? right? Small, intimate, relaxed. Um, those kind of things. Wedding package started. So do you only have these two photos for wedding? Yeah. So that's a, a video. Oh, I, yeah. I and missed that. So maybe, maybe make that more obvious. <laughs> yes. I think they have an option for having like an overlay. Right. I thought that was just a pin on his suit jacket. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I missed it. Okay. Make video more obvious. Right. Is there music or something? I yeah, there's know. music. I don't want to blast everyone's ears out. I don't know how loud it is. Oh, I just muted it for a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's good. That's great. You have like a slideshow going on so people can um, see what's up with that. Um, I like how my recommended video comes up. It's like Justin Bieber. <laughs> I know. There's so many things I'm trying to figure out, but it's like, it has to be linked to YouTube. And if you link it to YouTube, then yeah. So a lot of this technical stuff, I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah. You can also do, um, how do I always pronounce it wrong? Vimeo. Vimeo. Is that right, Jenna? Vimeo. Yeah. yeah. I think Vimeo. you have to pay for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you do. I know. I, I Unfortunately, I'm literally at the point in life where I'm pretty much having to do as much free as I possibly can. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I think it's okay, though. It's great. You have a video. You just need to make it More evident right. that this is a video. And we got to work on these gutters. Yes. Or padding, whatever it's called. Right. Um, yeah we need to bold up some things we have going here and what's missing. 
is she frozen or am I? the action oh <laughs> that's right it took me a second i was like what is missing what is missing all right call the action and you want to have a couple on here you know you can have one right here you can have one at the bottom so like let's talk more so that's that one thing i want to also mention why do we have this recent work Yes, so that is something that I'm trying to figure out as well. Um, because every time I've talked to anyone that isn't a photographer, um, yeah. they're like, but like, I, how do I know what kind of sessions you do? How do I get the pictures of it? How do I know that, like, they just kept asking for more and more and more examples of my work. Like just random people like um, neighbors sat down because I've had a lot of people look over it that are non-photographers and they kept going, but I, I'd like to see more things, um, you know, you're good. Yeah, that was just the, the feedback and I just didn't know the right way to do it. Right, well then I haven't looked at these other ones, but in that case, you need to have these under your portfolio. Like you need to have, I, that's what you're saying that you need more for your por portfolio and stuff, but your recent work, divide these things out. Yeah. And add your grid, like Kirsten talked about, having the yeah. grid on there could be a good thing and you know do that yeah i have a lot of like i have a long list of changes now <laughs> sorry no it's great i love it i so, love it because there's been so many questions that you just i put things on there and tried to see if it worked and i've taken things off and it's just you kind of get too close you know yeah. and it's really hard to step back and figure absolutely. out absolutely right, is this working or is it not working absolutely Right. So what am I going to tell you about pricing? You got to flip this. Okay. Most expensive first to least expensive. Or you need to put what you want to sell most, right? Like, I mean, this middle package is what you're trying to drive people towards, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah, I would go most expensive. Also remove your Euro sign, remove your two... Oh, okay. That's like pricing psychology. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. So remove your Euro sign and then you can also remove, if you want to keep it the 0, 0.00, you can, but usually I just take it off. Just no, I like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is okay. We've looked through your pricing a lot. So I'm just looking mostly at layout here with your, with your images. Uh, so, and the other thing is, is what you're going to want to do, because here you're, you're giving them a step-by-step -step of what's going to happen. You choose your session, you view your images, you choose your art, right? So let them know that's what you're going to tell them right here at the top. Give them a little brief oh, synopsis okay. of like, how does this work? Or, you know, like, what, what's the breakdown or, you know, something cute. You have words. <laughs> I have lots of words. It's finding the right words that are hard. I know, I especially when it's your own stuff. Like I'm so much better at finding words for other people than my own <laughs> my own stuff. So, um, but yeah, I was just gonna look down here. Okay, and then you have some pictures and stuff of products. That's great. And then I'm gonna look at your about me real quick cute little baby. So what am I going to tell you about this? Too many words and needs to be broken up with some bolded catchphrase or highlighted words. Yes. And, and there's not a call to action on this page. Is there? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. A good guess though. It's a good guess. <laughs> you could say like, <laughs> chat with me. Yeah. <laughs> no, what I was going to say is I want to hear, cause I read through this. I mean, I'm a rapid reader. No, I actually took a, I read it right before we got on the call. Um, and I want to hear more, like, I think it's great to have all these little anecdotes and like it, yeah, it lets people get to know you and all those things, but we want to hear about them too. Okay. Yeah. Right. What it is you're doing for them. And like how you got there. Your babies are so sweet. 
And thanks for the shout out. Um, but yeah, this is really good. And I would, in fact, add a call to action. Yeah. So, but great. I'm laughing because we had to come to Jesus meeting with those babies today. Which... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, so this is, I'm going to tell you this right now. I know you said you were wanting to make money. And so I'm not going to be like a super stickler on this with you because you, at this moment, you want to show like what you can offer anyone at the moment right. <laughs> to be honest but right. i do have a, a plan for the future right and i have more than two sessions booked for the entire year which is all i'm at right now right. so <laughs> what you know i'm going to tell you you're going to have to tighten these up get rid of yeah. anything that doesn't look like what you want to photograph if there's anything on here currently that you don't want to photograph even for money yes um then you need to get rid of it for right now it's okay because you said you know listen i'm hard up for cash i need that money and in that case go ahead and show things that you know maybe you're willing to do for the time being yeah. but once that once you're out of that situation which you will be at some point and you're going to get rid of anything that doesn't belong here yeah i have a i definitely have a plan good girl for next year i just i don't know we'd really like to <laughs> right well, yeah. a lot of these are actually quite sweet. So there's, there's yeah. versions that are like of the safe versions that are really sweet that might go forward. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to, um, don't stick something in just because it exists, but do the, do the good version of it. Yeah. Right. Um, I just want to tell you what we're doing. I have a question to, well, um, with picture sizes, yeah. it really annoys me to look at a website and not be able to see the whole picture yeah. when I have the, you know, even when I have it full screen and I will, I can't see the whole picture. And yet anytime that I try to make the picture smaller, there's so much space on the sides that it looks kind of funny. That's like this teeny little, like little picture. Do you have any like thoughts on how big a picture should be in terms of like the slideshow at the beginning or as you're scrolling down, like, should it be able to fit in a window fairly easily it should yes but what's hard is it's because everyone has different monitor sizes right right and if your site is responsive typically it'll adjust and squarespace is responsive yeah. um but typically it will adjust to that monitor size it might be a matter of again us looking at the design side of things and making sure that we have it like fit to I forget what they, how they label it on the design portion. Otherwise we can look for a code. I mean, the thing with Squarespace, what's amazing is you can literally like Google or even go on Pinterest and be like uh, Squarespace CSS code for, and whatever you're looking for, you can find it. It's just copy and paste it into your CSS. Cool. I mean, that's how I get around all my stuff. And then my other question was, I would say more people look at my website on their phones than would ever go to a computer and yeah. look at it. Right. So when I'm designing it, is it something like, do I prioritize one over the other? Because like what we were saying with this one, two, three on the desktop, it looks like one, two, three, but still on a phone, it's going to stack gonna this way. Right, which is why you're going to want to shorten a lot of these things up. Right. Because what's going to happen on the phone is this is going to become a photo. This yeah. is going to become a block underneath it. Right. So you're going to have to pick and choose what you have on here um, and maybe add them into different other different areas or, you know, things like that. Yeah. What I was going to tell you was um, how are you getting, besides SEO, what are you doing to market to drive people to your website? Um, well, right. The biggest part was um, the SEO was my first bit. And then um, I am just looking for ways to connect with my community at this point. I'm doing a, I, I've just kind of come up with a session that I'm really excited about, like really excited about. And one that I feel, would feel comfortable putting on a flyer and sticking it kind of all over the place and, that kind of thing, which is an hour session where um, calling them family fun sessions. And I 
bring the fun and you bring your family. We meet somewhere pretty and we, Kratlow Woods is close to us. So something like bubbles and a Frisbee and a soccer ball. And for 45 minutes, I get to take photos of your family having fun together. And the last 15, we get to make the, you know, make the photograph for your Nana, <laughs> make the right. photograph that your, you know, granny and, hold on a second. Samantha, please go upstairs now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm t I, I, I actually, I'm either photographing my children or I'm photographing with them nowhere in my vicinity. I, I can't split my go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It yeah. is hard. Over there dancing with the refrigerator. Um, <laughs> I'm very distracted. Sorry. Um, yeah. So it's the idea of introducing the concept of documentary storytelling photography to people who wouldn't even know that it exists by giving them a little something that they want and right. saying, look, look what else there is. And then hopefully moving them toward longer sessions in the right. future. Um, That's great. That's so I'm really excited idea. about that. And I have a model family booked on Wednesday to go out and, and kind of test run it. Right. Um, and so she would be someone who would have a lot of contacts because um, yeah, lots of contacts. And I'm doing it with her mom as well, who would have also a lot of contacts. Good. So. Do not be afraid to ask them to refer you. Oh, well. I'm not. <laughs> I know you're not. She's, but she's I just wait for anyone. I know you're good with, with asking for what you want. <laughs> but for anyone listening, when you have something like that, just be like, hey, can you let your friends know about me? I mean, you just got out of COVID. Um, I got to feed my kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think right now, especially is the time that we can be like, really honest because we all just are coming out of this yeah. craziness and people know. Um, and um, I actually just tonight spoke with somebody who's in charge of community development and tidy towns basically. And I've let them know and their PR person know that I can be the official slash unofficial photographer for all community events. So Amazing. we're doing kind of like a road cleanup tomorrow or tree planting or whatever. Um, and I also have somebody who is um, offering me a free space to do a photography workshop um, over the summer so I can have a room and do a, a free community workshop for, for moms who want to photograph their kids better. Great. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So that's where I've got it, what I've got at the moment. Proud of you. You'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. I've only really just been able to put my head down for the last kind of month, really. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel you. Okay, so did you have any other questions? Nope, I think that was it. Does anyone on here have any questions or anyone watching have any questions? Jenna, I know you need to go. Well, while we're waiting for questions, yeah, I do, I do have an appointment. I'm so sorry. But um, I was going to say, I feel like in Ireland, any documentary family photographer, you guys should band together. Oh, and we do. We are. We, do. we have. Okay. <laughs> yes, like a we're, website for all of you or like a shared financial how to market it so that you make it popular yeah we do we do okay. it's a very small little group um yeah but we do for she's sure like, Joanna, Joanna is a, a brilliant friend of mine she's fantastic and um I also have a Facebook group for women women slash female um photographers in Ireland and we have a lot of referrals and in fact my two okay only sessions that I have so far this year are in cabin, which is three hours away <laughs> because that's the person who referred me. But yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a, it is pretty good. Actually, it's, it seems to be a good network. It's just very um, slow. Yeah. I'm just wondering about shared marketing. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. But it's, it, I mean, you're doing the right thing by getting out into your community and mm -hmm. everything like that. Yeah, now that we're actually allowed to leave our houses, because that retail shops only opened on Monday and we weren't allowed to meet anybody or photograph until the beginning of May. So yeah, because Ireland's been in lockdown for, for a very long time. So it's it's very exciting. We our shops open tomorrow. Yay! Like for the first day. <laughs> like, whoa. I don't even know if they're like fully open, but woo. Um, all right. I think I'm done. Good. I, uh, I mean, spinning. I wish we could look at your old website, like, and show the difference because yeah. how far you've come, like, is just incredible. Like you're like so close. We just have to like tighten it up. 
Yeah. Tighten that puppy up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think, but you're doing a great job and yeah. proud of you. So, um, okay. I Thanks think, for submitting your website to us. Yeah. <laughs> you it's nerve wracking. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I hovered over the comment button for a while before I pressed. <laughs> yes, I know how many problems it has. <laughs> but it's not, it's not that bad. I mean, no, it's, it's not, bad. it's not bad. No. And again, like, you know, the big thing is your brand message is there, um, you know, and you yeah. have what needs to be there. So. All right, I'm going to mute because my kitchen is starting to get very... Um, <laughs> Or dancing with the fridge. <laughs> okay. Okay. You. What were you to say? I just said thank you. Oh, okay. I think that's it. I don't think uh, there's any other questions. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. I don't think we missed anything. Well, if anyone has any other questions, you can comment below this video and I will write a response or Jenna or Kirsten will write a response. And we are so thankful for every person who allowed us to go through their stuff. You all are brilliant and amazing. And I think that's it. Is there yeah. anything else I need to say? No, we're good. It's very nerve wracking. So thank you. Good job. Uh, yeah, great job. Oh, and if you want to come hang out with us for the next 12 months, uh, come join us in No More Fucking Around. I think we have a couple spots left. I'm not sure like things. Yeah, are. that's on my my save and do in the future. It might take me a while to get there, but you know, I'm getting there. I mean, if anything, it's just a ball of fun. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. It's definitely that. It is. Yeah. All right. Everyone have a great Thursday and we'll see you on the flippity flop. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can tell I'm like not feeling good because all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh. So it's, like, it's worth it working with you just to hear that this kind of shit you know? <laughs> all right okay Talk to you later everyone bye. bye thank you thank you everyone oh, i don't know how to get off facebook i don't know do we just leave the meeting <laughs> I, think so. I don't know okay, okay. see you later bye <laughs>